Garrosh Hellscream was dead, but there were still a few things left to do in the Warlords of Draenor expansion, like all of the raids, but also a little bit more story setup before all of the raids. Apologies for this video being shorter, maybe a little bit disjointed. Kind of sums up the expansion really, doesn't it? The Shadow Council Warlock, Cho Gaal, was searching for sources of power that could aid the Legion, and his search had led him underground to a bunch of unholy caverns beneath Nagrand, home to the Pale, which were deformed sickly orcs that worshipped the Void Lords. In studying those creepy handsy weirdos, Cho Gaal discovered that their power came from a fallen Naru, underneath the sacred mountain of Oshagoon. Now the orcs considered Oshagoon a sacred mountain, but it wasn't actually a mountain at all. Twas the remnants of the Draenei ship that had brought them to this world, the Genadar. When the Dimensional Fortress had crashed on Draenor, a Naru called Quare had become tangled within the wreckage, urging the Draenei to leave it behind as its light was slowly fading, meaning it would soon enter a void state. So the Draenei buggered off, knowing to keep themselves away. But nobody bloody thought to tell the Orcs that, did they? As far as the Orcs were concerned, something in this mountain attracted the spirits of their dead. And those spirits, who had actually been suffused with light energy that still lingered in the Genadar, would often impart wisdom to Orcish shamans that visited the mountain, thus making the place sacred to them. The name Oshagoon itself actually translates to Mountain of Spirits. Anyway, Jogal went ahead and employed the Pale, who in turn allowed him to enter their innermost sanctum, granting him direct access to the decaying Naru Quare. Meanwhile, Horde and Alliance champions were still in the Grand, doing side stuff, fighting against the Warsong clan's dark shamans, who were using their power to open portals to the Twisting Nether, feeding the Void Lord Invalidus. And after successfully closing those portals, they received word of more dark forces at work. The Elemental Furies had called to Farseer Drek'thar for aid, because one of their own, Gordorg, the Earthen Fury, had disappeared, and it was during the investigation of that matter that the Furies sent the champions a vision of Cho'Gal and his twatty scheme. So, Champions of Azeroth made their way to Oshagoon, discovering that the Pale had enslaved the elements. Not even Drek'thar could undo what had been done to the elemental spirits. Unfortunately, they were going to need to be put down. So, Champions really enjoyed doing that for a bit, until they arrived at the heart of the Sacred Mountain. There, they were sad to see that Gordorg had also been caught up in all of this. Farseer Drek'thar gave them the go-ahead to put the Earthen Fury out of his misery, but requested that they retrieve its heart so that it might one day kindle a new Earthen Fury. However, whilst they were distracted by all of that shit, Jogal made some progress. Fiddling with the fallen Naru, he was filled with the secrets of the Void, empowering him with forbidden knowledge and near limitless power. He immediately transformed Quare into a Void God, Decimitus, now a being that was even more powerful than the Dark Star back in Shadowmoon Valley. But the champions then arrived and immediately dealt with that. However, Chogol did manage to cheese it whilst the champions were slapping Decimitus around, heading to Highmull in search of magical rune stones which could further enhance his power. At this point, the Horde and Alliance decided to divide their forces again. They had no idea where Chogol had gone, but the vast bulk of the Iron Horde leadership was still at large. So the Horde volunteered to go north, back to Gorgrond, to capture Blackhand, and the Alliance agreed to do Highmull by sheer coincidence because there was word that both Gromash Hellscream and Kargath Bladefist would be there. See, the Ogre City was well known for its Colosseum, where big grand fights would be put on. Both Kargath and Gromash would be in attendance for that, apparently, despite there being a full-blown war going on. And since Highmall was very well guarded and would take way too long to assault head-on, the Alliance settled on infiltration of the city instead. Super awesome cool champions would enter the place, sign up for the aforementioned big grand fights, and then just wing it and take it from there. Upon arrival, Alliance champions were surprised to see Cho'Gal in the cells, among other potential combatants, but that was probably nothing to worry about. They then ascended to the arena and fought against some random but hurt insecure loser with a tiny penis for a bit. However, as that battle ended, Kargath Bladefist recognized the Alliance heroes from their prior battle in Arak and leapt into the arena for a rematch. And that was so damned exciting that even Imperator Margok the ruler of the city left his throne to check out what was going on. Now Kargath was very confident that he would be victorious, having put his 10,000 hours in when it comes to arena battles, and also having already beaten the heroes once. But this is the end game now. The champions were back to being Mary Sue's again. Unfortunately, upon seeing Kargath's defeat, Gromash buggered off, 
meaning the heroes had lost their chance at ending the war here and now. Eventually, in an unseen turn of events, Cho'Gal took advantage of all the drama in the Colosseum to spring his trap. As the champions took out all of the arena's challenges, Imperator Margok actually became more vulnerable, with the only thing keeping him safe now being the Colosseum guards. Cho'Gal very easily escaped his cell and opened a portal to the centre of the arena, challenging Margok whilst his army of Pale Orcs scaled the walls and started to wreak havoc. And that caused Margok to cheese it back to his throne room, with Cho'Gal and the champions giving chase. The chaotic struggle led to a whole bunch of others breaking free from their cells beneath the Colosseum, including the Butcher, Tectus and Brackenspore. And also getting in the champion's way were Margot's personal guards and Korag, the greatest of the magic breakers, which are basically weird ogres that are immune to specific if not all forms of magic. So that's all of those bosses now accounted for. Eventually, and finally, the heroes of Azeroth arrived at the throne room, battling against Margok, without realising that they were doing exactly what Cho'Gal wanted them to do. Once the Imperator was sufficiently weakened, Cho'Gal burst in, ensnaring Margok in a field of dark magic. The Shadow Council Warlock then started to draw power from the rune stones he'd come here for, channeling their incredible energies through the Ogre Leader and killing him in the process. So in terms of story, Cho'Gal was now a near insurmountable foe, whilst the champions were utterly exhausted. But, for the sake of brevity, they went ahead and took his ass. Big whoops. And with that, all was right in the world. Okay, Gromash had escaped to fight another day, but the Alliance had managed to remove the threat of the Shattered Hand and the Gorian Empire. Now, before we get to the two sentences summarising the entire Blackrock Foundry raid, the Legendary Ring questline that has been removed from the game, so I can't capture any footage for it, gets mentioned here. During an attempt to spy on Gul'dan, Khadgar received a bit of a nasty surprise. Turned out that the Archmage's scrying went both ways, inadvertently tipping off the Shadow Council leader as to Khadgar's location. And with that information, Gul'dan dispatched his greatest assassin, a half-orc half-dranai named Garona. Now, Garona did not volunteer her life in service to the Shadow Council. She was never given a choice. Gul'dan had forced her to become a killer, controlling her mind with fell magic. Early on in the expansion, Garona had failed an attempt on Khadgar's life due to the Archmage's bodyguard Cordana fending off the attack, but on this second occasion, the assassin succeeded, inflicting Khadgar with poison. But Horde champions pursued Garona, eventually capturing her and retrieving the antidote. Fortunately, Khadgar sensed the dark influence over Garona's mind, so he decided to work toward freeing her instead of retaliating violently. He gave the Horde champions a shopping list of a whole bunch of items needed to free Garona from Gul'dan's control, including the Arm of Blackhand for some reason, and so off they went to obtain those things. Now, Warlord Blackhand had returned to his seat of power at Blackrock Foundry in Gorgrond, where he and his men continued to manufacture and ship weapons to Gromash and his Iron Horde. So it was in everyone's best interest to take out the Foundry and its operations anyway. And after this book went into quite a lot of detail about the Highmall raid, we literally get two sentences describing this one, which I shall read word for word so that no one can accuse me of being lazy. The Horde fought their way through the engine of the Iron Horde's war machine all the way to Blackhand himself. In an intensely personal battle for the Horde, champions dispatched the Blackrock leader and claimed his hand alongside the other items on Khadgar's list. And that's it. That's all we get. Unfortunately, upon returning with Khadgar's requested items, the Archmage was still unable to free Garona from Gul'dan's influence. He was going to need more things, because that's how legendary questlines work. So he sent the champions to infiltrate a Shadow Council hideout in Shadowmoon Valley, the Den of Secrets, to retrieve another potentially useful artifact, an Orb of Dominion, which Khadgar reckoned was being used to control many of Gul'dan's agents. The champions went ahead and did that, kicking the shit out of another ogre called Dentarg for a bit. And after that retrieval mission, Khadgar successfully freed Garona. Grateful for finally being released from Gul'dan's spell, Garona revealed that the Shadow Council leader was, at this very moment, on his way to meet Gromash in Northern Talador. The heroes Garona and Khadgar immediately set out, spying on that little rendezvous. There, they learned that Gromash was actually struggling to maintain his grip on the Iron Horde, demanding that everyone fall back to Tanan Jungle to regroup. However, Gul'dan then brought the fell blood of Manoroth back into the conversation offering Gromash and all of the orcs assembled at the meeting one last chance at power. Sure, you'd be bound to the will of the Burning Legion, but at least you'd have the chance to defeat the champions of Azeroth. But Gromash straight up refused, 
he'd take defeat over being bound to the will of demons any day. Unfortunately, Kilrog, Deadeye and his bleeding hollow orcs didn't really share that conviction. Deadeye and his clan stepped forward and drank the Pit Lord's blood, their bodies transforming instantly, and they pledged their loyalty to Gul'dan, while Scromash was incapacitated and taken away. Gul'dan then declared that the Iron Horde would now be known as the Fell Horde, the supreme warriors of the Burning Legion. At this point, Khadgar bade the champions to return to the main army, inform the leaders of both factions that they were going to need to marshal their forces. It was time to invade Danan jungle. Strike quickly, or else the Fell Horde were going to summon the Legion to Draenor, and that would not end well for Azeroth whatsoever. Both factions rallied their forces, but Gul'dan then twisted the very land itself to work against them, summoning the Fell Blight, an entire river of Fell energy from the throne of Kil'jaeden, which corrupted the entire region, Hellfire Citadel included. Venturing through the jungle was now going to be extremely difficult, but champions of both factions then found an unlikely ally in the former master shipwright of the Iron Horde, one Solog Rourke. This guy was still loyal to Gromash and was therefore eager to stop Gul'dan. With his help, harbours were constructed at both main garrisons, and with those new fleets, a less guarded landing point in Danan jungle was located, allowing the Horde, Alliance and allied Draenor forces to assault the jungle on two fronts one from the sea, and the other the zone's main entry point. As the heroes pressed inland from the seafront, they set up new bases of operation and recruited several of Gul'dan's enemies to their side. However, Gul'dan was also recruiting allies of his own, including a former leader of the outcast Arakoa, as well as the Sethek, more worshippers of the fallen wind serpent god. As one final bit of preparation before the raid, Khadgar tasked the champions with retrieving the Tomes of Chaos, ancient volumes of fell knowledge, which the Archmage feared would create even more Gul'dans in the future if they ended up in the wrong hands. But when the champions brought the requested tomes back to Khadgar, they found that Cordana Felsong had been corrupted by the Orb of Dominion. She was now a servant of the Legion and attacked the heroes, using the Tomes of Chaos to bolster her strength. And although the champions were able to destroy the tomes, Cordana escaped. Khadgar was absolutely devastated by all of that, but now was not the time for crying. Both the Rangari and Frostwolf forces had at last cleared the Fell Horde from the main entry point of the jungle, allowing them to join up with everyone else, and that combined army then fought their way through the Orcish encampments and into Hellfire Citadel. The fighting within the Citadel was brutal, unlike anything the champions had ever faced, apparently. But they fought on against Fell Empowered Orcs, Arakoa, Shadow Council Warlocks, all of the things. They defeated the corrupted Kilrog Deadeye, they faced Terran Gore again, although he looked a bit different now after falling into the depths of Arkandun. Gorging himself on Draenei's souls had caused him to become a massive bloated abomination known as Gorefiend. After that, the champions of both Horde and Alliance discovered Gromash Hellscream, who was being tortured by a Fell Lord. So they freed him, because they're nice like that. In response though, Gromash simply asked the heroes to leave him alone, which is a weird way of saying thank you. Continuing on, the heroes battled their way to the pinnacle of Hellfire Citadel, where Gul'dan awaited them. But instead of facing them himself, Gul'dan reanimated the remains of the Pit Lord Manoroth, and then cheesed it through a portal. So even after dispatching the big boned Pit Lord, the heroes were a little bit disappointed. Gul'dan had escaped. They'd failed. However, Khadgar then turned everyone's frowns upside down. He transported the champions to the ruins of the Dark Portal, and there they discovered Gul'dan had created a new, smaller portal, the Black Gate. And then everybody shat themselves, because out of this new gateway stepped the demon lord Archimond. With the battle unexpectedly moving to a different location at the last minute, the hero's defensive positions were scattered. And this was Archimond, for crying out loud. But the mad lads went ahead and threw caution to the wind and pulled the demon lord. Fortunately for the champions, they weren't alone. Gromash soon appeared and joined their fight, as well as Juratan, his frost wolves, Urel and her Rangari. All who were there gave everything they had, fighting for the future of both of their worlds. And amazingly, Archimond was defeated. However, Archimond knew that so long as Gul'dan survived, the Burning Legion would still have a way to Azeroth. So, in his final breath, he used force powers to push Gul'dan through the Black Gate, with the portal then closing behind him. Double balls. But aside from that majorly worrying development, the heroes of Azeroth then rejoiced. Draenor was free, Gromash then turned to both Urel and Juratan, 
He had much to atone for, but hoped to maybe make up for all of that. He still held some command over the orcs, so maybe they could all work together. Mend Dranor as one big happy family. No amount of time or effort would ever restore all that the Iron Horde had taken from them, but both Yurel and Duratan tentatively agreed to maybe take that first step on the road to healing and see how things went from there. And that is it. That's the end of the Warlords of Draenor expansion. Not gonna lie, I was kinda hoping that Chronicle Volume 4 would take the time to maybe expand on Wad a little bit, delve into the cut content like Farallon that they never ended up releasing, perhaps fill in some of the gaps. But no, fuck me, I guess. On the plus side though, we have arrived at the Legion stuff. 